Hi, this is Shreyang Siddharth and welcome to the next video of functions in Kotlin. In this video, we will talk about the tail rake functions in case of Kotlin. So, this function uses recursion in more optimized way than any other language such as Java or C programming and so on. Now, what is the meaning of recursion? Recursion means calling its own function from within the function. That is, we will call a function from inside its own function. Now in case of Kotlin, whenever we call the same function multiple number of times such as hundreds of thousands of time, then that recursive process is actually optimized and the Kotlin simply prevents the stack overflow exception. Because calling the same function recursively can simply blow up the stack memory. So in that case, the Kotlin simply optimize the code, call the function recursively, right? And now to define a tail rec function, we have to use the keyword of tail rec. Now inside the IntelliJ IDE, I will simply write my code to find the Fibonacci series. Now what do we mean by the Fibonacci series is that, suppose I have the number 0 and the next number is 1. So the next number will be the sum of 1 and 0 that is 1 again. And the next number will be 1 plus 1 equal to 2. And then we will have 2 plus 1 such as 3. Similarly, 3 plus 2 such as 5 and next will be 5 plus 3 8 and then 8 plus 5 13 and so on like this, let's say 21, right? And the series goes on. So let us write a program to find the Fibonacci series. So for that, let us define a function. So here I have simply defined a method of get Fibonacci number at the nth position, right? And here I am passing two parameters of a and b that determines the starting point of the Fibonacci series such as 0 and 1. These two values we have to give so that we can get the third number right by adding these two numbers. And now this simply returns the value or the Fibonacci number at the nth position. Suppose I pass 6, so the sixth number is actually 8. So this function will simply return 8 right now. Here I am using the big integer. Now the purpose of using the big integer is that this big integer class can hold a very large number or a integer value. So you can call this big integer as the big boss of the integer class, right? And now here I am simply writing some if else condition. So if part is totally understandable. But here in the else part you can see I am simply calling get Fibonacci number which is actually its own method here, right? So if the else part is executed, it simply execute this method again recursively. So the recursion goes on like this infinite number of times. Suppose if this n is 10,000, so it will simply loop through 10,000 times like this, right? And now here, let us solve this error by simply pressing Alt plus Enter. So simply import the big integer, right? And now from inside the main method, I will simply call this method so as to get the Fibonacci number. So here this is my main method inside which I am simply calling println get Fibonacci number and simply passing 5 as a parameter and the starting position as 1 and 0, right? If I run the code right now, I will get let's say some value among these numbers present at the fifth position. So let us now run the code and here we get 5 as the output. So let us try something different, let us try 7 and let's see what happens. And here we get 13. So at the 7th position we have 13, right? So the 7th Fibonacci number is we are getting 13. If we type here 8 then we will get let's say 21 like that. So the series goes on like this. So as many times, so whatever n value that we will give here, the else part will be executed and the recursion will goes on that is that is, it will simply call its own method again and again till it finds the result that is till this point gets executed, right? Now suppose if I type here 100, let's see what happens. So here we get a very big number value that is a number, the Fibonacci number at the 100 position is this one. Now if I type 10,000, let's see what happens. So here our program has crashed just because we have just ran out of the stack memory. So the Java virtual machine has simply printed out the stack overflow error. 
that is it has simply thrown out this error of stack overflow. So we are now out of stack memory. So this is the usual scenario in all the programming language. If you write the same code in case of Java, C or C++ then it was simply going to throw this error, right? But in Kotlin the things are different. You can simply use the tail rec keyword. So this function now becomes the tail recursive, right? And now here let us first try with 100th number. So I guess our code will execute normally. So here we get the output, right? But this time using the tail rec function, if I use 10,000 as a nth value, then let's see what happens. So in the output, we have a very huge number, right? And this number goes on till the end. You cannot find the end right here because the number is too large. So in Kotlin, we have a tail rec function that simply executes the recursion internally. That is without affecting the stack memory. So without affecting the stack memory, it simply execute this method recursively about 10,000 number of times without affecting your application in the runtime by saving memory, right? So the Kotlin provides an alternative solution for the stack overflow error. So this was all about the tail rec function in case of Kotlin. So now I guess slowly and steadily you will fall in love with Kotlin because Kotlin is very very powerful version of Java or you can say it is the future of Android. So thanks for watching and have a good day.